Good morning, guys. I am Katie from Mitzah Creek Farm. Welcome back to my channel. Today is Wednesday, July 20th, and I thought it would be a good day to give you a garden tour, kind of update tour of the garden and pumpkin patch area um, because it is overcast and misting and beautiful out. We have been in a drought, and so we have not had rain since uh, probably early June, but in the past 10 days, we've gotten a uh, about two inches of rain so we are loving this um, it's overcast it's misting out it is absolutely beautiful and it feels like we can take a deep breath and just enjoy the beautiful weather um so here i am in our high tunnel you guys know that this is what we use for our garden um, we started a couple raised beds i'll show you those in a, in a little bit um, we are eventually going to expand our area this year um, we had our daughter's graduation party in here the weekend before Memorial Day, so it just wasn't feasible to expand much in here. With as crazy as our schedule is, I'm very glad that I didn't um, expand a lot this year, expand any this year. We actually cut back on quite a few things. We are trying to grow things more efficiently so that we can bring that into next year so that when we do grow certain areas, we can um, expand and do it efficiently so we're not taking up a ton of space we can water efficiently for when it's in a drought all that kind of stuff so as you guys who um, have watched our channel for years know we started a few years ago growing our own mums to sell with our pumpkins and this year we are growing additional plants as well so that we can make mixed fall um, flower baskets to go with the mums and so I finally have everything transplanted. They're all divided. Um, we don't have irrigation set up for these guys yet. Um, that will be coming. Um, but right now, the way it is with the size that they are, it's working to just water them by hand. So I come down every evening and water these guys by hand. It's working out really well. But let me take you back to the um, garden area, which is kind of my favorite area. And we have things exploding like crazy. It feels good to finally have some fresh produce. So these are our cucumbers. And you can see here, I have to pick. But we have cucumbers everywhere. I try to come down and remember to trellis these guys often. Sometimes I forget. And this guy here, uh, still growing like crazy, but it looks like I forgot to trellis it after about two feet off the ground. So it is growing way out and over. So I need to get this guy trellis too. So these ones here are county fair cucumbers. And, um, these guys have those little prickers on them more than the other ones. I'm wondering if they should have been canning cucumbers and I'm just letting them grow too big. But they're pretty pointed and so I don't think that they are. I'm thinking maybe I'm supposed to harvest them at this stage. So, so I'll need to go back and look on the county fair cucumbers if they're pickling cucumbers or if they are slicing cucumbers usually when I buy cucumbers but then again I buy them in the late fall for the next year um, usually when I buy them I buy ones that if they are pickling cucumbers you they can also be used as slicers but I just want to double check because um, like this guy here looks like it would be a good canning one it's not too pointy so I don't know, are they going to be, you know, the little ones, because um, the little ones don't look like the right shape, or are they going to be bigger like that if they are canning? I don't know. I need to go back and look. I really should keep a binder down here of everything I'm planting and the details on it, just so that it makes life a little simpler when I don't remember things. Not bad for a cucumber harvest. These are the, I think they're called Buy It Alpha or Be It Alpha. Um, and then these are county fair. I do have some more back there. I'll show you those in a minute. In the next row here, we have zucchini. And we've been getting a couple of zucchini almost every day now uh, for about the last week. And we got this Italian white zucchini this year. 
and we are liking it. Um, we eat zucchini almost every day in the summer, so that is good. We've been having a problem with pollination though. So we kind of took some drastic measures. We did two things, um, well, three things. You can see here they have been trellised in tomato cages. I have been uh, very intensively pruning these guys and they are growing like crazy, um, which is good. But my, my theory is, is that if I prune a whole bunch, then the bees can see the flowers and smell the flowers easier. Otherwise it's too hard for them to get into. Um, my second thing that I did is um, I took the rest of the potted plants from Sydney's graduation party and I put in between each row. So you can see here we have flowers. Now these guys dry out really quickly. I'm sure that they're root bound in the pots that they're in, but I water them every day with the water from those guys. So they're getting fertilizer and they're getting water. They're still producing lots of beautiful blooms. And um, that seems to help as well. And then we'll discuss this more in an upcoming video, but we got a bunch of honeybees. Since they have come, we have noticed a huge difference both in the pumpkin patch and in here in the high tunnel. So that has made a huge difference, has probably made the biggest. Um, I have been coming down and hand pollinating as I can. Um, most of the time I don't have time early in the morning because I am running kids places and I'm working. Um, and last year I was able to come down um, and hand pollinate a lot. Uh, so getting bees was a big, huge step. I will show you that in an upcoming video though. Um, but it has made a difference having those guys in here. You can see here, this guy is wide open to be pollinated. I will probably hand pollinate that just to be on the safe side. Um, but we have been getting a couple zucchini every day. You can see that one there has not been pollinated, but we had 100 degree temperatures yesterday. So I'm thinking that uh, it's gonna abort that uh, blossom just because of the heat that we had yesterday. In this next row, we have beans. And um, these guys were supposed to be a bush bean, but I am seeing lots and lots of runners and tendrils, so I'm not quite sure if they are gonna be a bush bean. So I might have to trellis these. I'm just giving them a few more days to see if they kind of stop growing at that height. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to come up with a trellis for these. Uh, so that we can harvest them easier and they don't choke out everything because they already are. You can see right back in there, they're going into the tomatoes and we don't want that. So behind the beans are the tomatoes and I had to come through the other day and prune the borage drastically because it was kind of taking over. And so I bent um, some down as much as I could because once they, uh, form all the stalks and stuff, they do get kind of top heavy, I'm noticing. So I kind of helped some lay down, but then I did a drastic pruning on them because they were attracting tons of bees, which is great, but they were kind of choking everything out. But we have lots of ripe tomatoes. This is the um, Prairie Fire tomato. Those are delicious. You can see I have basil in here. And these are the um, cherry tomatoes. I think they're called A. Grappoli something or other. De Inverno, maybe? A. Grappoli De Inverno, that sounds right. And then we have our Brad's Atomic Grape. And these guys are just about ripe. Look how gorgeous that is. Oh, that one's feeling soft. Oh, it doesn't quite want to come off yet. I'll give that another day. Maybe tonight I'll come down and get that one. In the summer for breakfast, my favorite thing is to come down to the high tunnel with a pack of these um, little fresh mozzarella snacks. There's three little mozzarella balls in each pack. And um, I pick, I grab a mozzarella ball, I pick a piece of basil, smaller piece, some of these are really big, pick a piece of basil, and I pick a fresh tomato and I have a delicious caprese salad for breakfast every morning. I look forward to this on those bitter cold mornings that we have in the winter. 
and uh, this is kind of what gets me through that nasty yucky weather in the winter now I have noticed a few pests in here and I'm not quite sure what they are or what I want to do about it um, I do notice some little green they almost look like baby dragonflies but they're not quite they might be June bugs but I can't get close enough to them to actually see what they are flying around um, but then let me show you this this is really weird and I'm not sure what it is so the ants are eating whatever these are so I was thinking they might be aphids not sure if you can see that all the things moving around are ants and I don't want to spray anything on them because of our bees then further down we have some on the bottom of our tomato plants too that are just around in this area and they almost look like gnats and but they're dead and they're like stuck in the little hairs on the tomato plants and so I have no clue what they are um, and I am trying to figure that out um, I did get some ladybugs to put in here and so between the ladybugs and the bees I definitely don't want to spray anything on them so um, the ladybugs I notice are are eating stuff and there's not a ton left so that kind of goes to show me that maybe they aren't aphids or if they are aphids maybe they didn't hatch I don't know I have no clue um, and then we also have a caterpillar type thing in here and it's just as only in one area um, so I have to search for this caterpillar we had some earlier we had like one or two down there and um, I didn't really start looking until they started eating the tomato plants it was not hornworms though it was just like a little um, almost like a tent caterpillar or something but I'll show you this basil plant because that is what they really love and you can really see their poop on it okay, so here you can see all the holes in my basil plant and then um, Oh, of course there we go you can see like little tiny pieces of poop but I've noticed that during the day they kind of crawl in and hide so I'm not quite sure where this dude is but I will keep an eye on it really as long as they are not going gung-ho on my tomatoes or anything else that is really producing I don't care um, I have been pruning um, the basil back and so I think that that probably keeps them close to that one area. Maybe it's just a bug. I don't know. That's that's why they recommend companion planting is because uh, basil uh, will act as a food source for pests or deterrent for pests that like to eat tomatoes. So I'm not concerning myself with it too much. Um, once it starts affecting uh, the tomatoes or the other plants, then, then we'll get serious. Uh, but I think it's just one or two in here. I have no clue what these other gnat looking things are though. No clue. And while I'm talking, look at this. Oh, I dropped it. That is the little bugger that's eating everything. So you can see all the poop right there. So this is one basil plant down from the other one I just showed you. So over here I took and I planted a whole bunch of or the rest of the flowers from Sid's party just so that they can attract bees and pollinators in here. I planted these in the ground um, because they were really root bound and really dry. We have some onions and these tomatoes here are all um, volunteers. So I'm just letting them go. This row is our peppers. These bell peppers, the soil that they're in must not be right for them because they really are not doing well. And then with the heat, they're aborting a lot, but they're just not growing very well. Which is funny because last year they were crazy here in the high tunnel. This one's looking better. But then these little guys are doing awesome look at all these these are all hot peppers and they have thousands of peppers in in between these five or six plants 
And these guys are hot. They're like a jalapeno, but they're a lot smaller. And these are called jigsaw peppers, and they can be ornamental. That guy feels like it's ripe. Um, they can be ornamental, and you can see the beautiful variegation in different colors. There's purples and greens and whites, and a volunteer tomato in there. Um, so I really like these. These are a good size for us because we can very easily mix them into a salsa or something and not have to make super big batches because we have big jalapenos. So these guys here are Bonnie, Bonnie's Best Tomatoes, and these are what we got for slicers and canners this year because we did cut back, and they are looking really good. We have not had any ripe ones yet, so, um, but they're looking wonderful, and they are like the perfect size for what we are looking for. So I really hope they taste good so that we can use them um, again next year. Uh, they, that size is perfect. They're not massive like a beef steak. Um, but they are bigger than aroma. So this is kind of a crazy mess here, um, but our peas are almost done. The uh, sugar snap, uh, I don't remember what they were called. Uh, the, they're a green sweet pea. They're doing pretty good on that row back there. These purple ones, I'm not impressed with. They did add a lot of color. Uh, it was absolutely beautiful, but they did not have much flavor and they are not very hearty. They're the first ones to die here. Um, so it is kind of, uh, I'm, I'm kind of glad that they're dead um, or dying. We will get a couple more decent harvests off of those. Um, and then we will thin those out because we planted some um, Chinese noodle beans here. So we are yard long noodle beans, whatever they're called. Um, and you can see that those are starting to get pretty tall. Um, right there you can see so they are gonna go up the same trellis um, So once they are a little bit bigger we will thin out the peas and Weed in here because we obviously have some weeds and then uh, get those guys growing a little bit more So the same goes for this one um, the there are that dark green down on the bottom are beans and um, Once these guys die then we will uh, pull the peas out and let the beans grow up. We also have a row of bush beans here and then on the inside of there we also have a row of bush beans. Now those are our carrots that desperately need to be thinned and weeded, just have not had time and in the grand scheme of things um, I'm okay with smaller carrots. Carrots are not my priority. And then on the back wall here, those are our loofah sponges. We had little tiny loofah sponges and um, some blossoms on them, but I've not seen blossoms in a while. And so I'm not quite sure what's going on, but they uh, are getting really big now. So we should start seeing some uh, fruit on those fairly quickly. Um, I'm thinking that within the next week, we should start seeing a lot of flowers opening and a lot of fruit. Now back to this little area here, um, this has four uh, tomato or four cucumbers that are supposed to be super good for growing in high tunnels and um, they are self pollinating so you don't need self yeah pollinating so you don't need the male and female so it should grow more cucumbers but I'm finding it's not yet but maybe they'll start picking up here in a little bit. It does look like we have some pest damage. Oh, one more pest we have in here um, is grasshoppers. We have tons of grasshoppers in here. And I've noticed I've been picking grasshoppers off at night when I'm coming into water. And so um, they seem to like these plants for some reason. But we've got quite a few cucumbers I do need to pick right now on there. And then over, these are one of each of the melons that we planted this year. And wow, look at that. I need to trellis these. That is crazy. That's grown like three feet. So I need to get my clips and trellis these. But they are looking good. We did have one melon. I think this is called a model melon. And we did have one here and it's split, but I ate it for breakfast the other day. I'll put a picture in here. There's a daddy long legs. I see a weird looking, oh, 
I don't know what that what that is. That's like a juice or something. I see little baby melons, but not tons. So that is it for growing in the high tunnel um, for our garden. But, and I'm gonna have people ask, that is about a 25, one, two, five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Yep, 25 by 34 foot space that those guys are in. Um, so you can see we're trying to grow efficiently for that size of space. Now, if we come out here, um, here are our mums. They are doing awesome. They still have uh, five or six weeks of growth on them. And they're already this big. So that is wonderful. We have a couple. We've been having issues with the drip emitters. They haven't been working well. It's almost like they um, weren't made right. So... We were having some issues, but I think we have them all fixed now. So that is um, a relief. But um, for the most part, they are growing really well and uh, pretty simple. You just gotta make sure that they have water and fertilizer every day. Now, turning around, this is the raised bed. This is the only raised bed that has stuff in it. And it is very tightly packed and very condensed in here. This is uh, 12, no, this is nine feet wide by almost 20 feet long. And we have tons of melons going up the trellises here. I have been coming in and cutting suckers and pruning almost every day on this guy or every other day. And we have lots of melon or we did yesterday when I looked at it. Let me find one for you. One looks like it's gonna be a uh, cantaloupe. I have no clue what that one is. And then we have these guys going up that one. So now that I am thinning that out, they are growing uh, super quick and I need to come in and you can see how they just uh, kind of go crazy with their growth and you need to be on top of uh, Training them to the trellis. Otherwise they if you miss a day or two, they just kind of go crazy Now here we did get a couple tiny strawberries off of our strawberries uh, You can see them right there. I wasn't expecting anything. I just put them here so that we could get them established behind them our onions that is a flower pot that fell over and I'm just leaving it there because it's all intertwined with the vines and the onions and everything. So we just make sure that those flowers have water and we're just letting them be in there for, for the year because I don't want to try to get in there and ruin a whole bunch of stuff. Um, these are our asparagus that went to seed, so that is good. We just planted these this year. And then um, these were a couple extra tomato plants that we had and they are doing good but i'm not pruning them i'm not doing anything i just wanted to see what it looked like and they are dense brush so if you look in there you can see we got some tomatoes but it is super 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 thick so maybe if i have time someday i will prune some in here but i just kind of wanted to let it go and see what it did um, they were just two extra plants I had, and I thought, you know what, I'll just stick them right here. And uh, they're, they're doing good. Um, they're, the plants are nice and healthy. So then, um, you can see behind me, these are all of our bush pumpkins. These are our trellis pumpkins. I'll show you those in a minute. Um, and then there are our bees. So you can see the bees are all coming over here to pollinate everything. So that is wonderful. Need to get in here and put cardboard and shavings down and get everything weeded in here um but there are so many hours in the day so if you have this one little weedy patch i'm letting it go i'm not gonna let it bother me even though it does <laughs> so this is the trellis area and these are all oh, look at the honeybees in there that is exactly what we want to see oh there's three of them look how awesome that is oh there's another one up there so these are all these are all long vine small pumpkins and gourds and so i have been training and trellising them to go up these 
trellises that Owen and Beck built for me. Um, and I did not come out yesterday because I was working and I did not have a chance to come out and grab these guys and move them up and clip them up. And um, it has been literally one day that I missed and look how much they have grown. I did not realize that uh, trellising vines like this um, would take so much work because like with cucumbers and stuff, you know, they have the tendrils. And so I thought that they would cling like cucumbers do to the vine more or the trellising material more, but um, they do some, but they don't follow it like other vines do. So it does require me to come in almost every day. Well, now at this stage every day and um, weave them in or clip them if I need to uh, with the little black clips, put the clip on and clip them to the, the trellis. Um, but they are looking wonderful. I did come in and prune quite a few of these. You probably can't tell. I can tell by looking in because I was trying to get the stuff that's on the ground um, cleaned up so that the bees can get in and get to the flowers easier because when they are super thick it is hard for the bees to get in sometimes so this one is looking gorgeous look at it, it goes all the way up um it actually is over on the other side and this one looks like let me show you it looks like it's going to be a gourd of some sort okay so that little guy looks like it's going to be a yellow gourd with green on the end and green on the top would be my guess. And then these are all bush. And then you can see right there, it starts transitioning to the long vines. And then we go, you can even see along the edge over there, there's some. And then they go up and around the high tunnel. And then those are the smaller vines up there. And they cover the whole area. Oh, do you see that one right there, that gourd? That looks amazing. Nice and healthy. It hasn't opened for pollination yet, the bud. But you can see that it will obviously attract a lot of bees because it is in the wide open space right there. We have four or five other areas where we have um, pumpkins planted or they volunteered. One is right up there. Um, those guys are doing great. I have no clue what those are because those are volunteer. Um, so we were experimenting with the couple leftover plants that we had and seeing what type of ground they grow best in um, after our cattle have been in the area. And so we are just kind of doing an experiment on areas where we've had round bales, have not had round bales, that kind of stuff. And so we do have other pumpkins elsewhere. Um, I'm not even going to do a video on them because I'm so far behind on videoing. Um, but I'm really happy now that we have these bees with um, the pumpkins. I came out today. Everything I'm seeing is pollinated and they are looking great. So I am so glad that we got these bees and I'm looking and I just see honeybees flying everywhere um, as I'm looking at stuff. So that is wonderful. Um, prior to this week, I was very concerned because I've only seen a handful of bumblebees and a couple small little uh, black type hornet bees. Um, I know they sting. I don't know what kind they are, but I had not really seen much for pollinators. We have a couple hummingbirds that like to come in the high tunnel, but that's about it. So um, I was so happy to see all these bees and they are pollinating like crazy. I have not seen any pumpkins that haven't been pollinated that have opened since we've gotten them. So that is wonderful and it is working out really well for us. All right, let's go up to the north side of the high tunnel because I had some really cool big pumpkins up there. So I'm trying to keep as many of these vines on the plastic as possible. But looking in here, Look at that one. Look at all the bees. There's a little one. That one's been pollinated. There are 
there's one. There's another big one. So as we're looking in here, I just keep seeing more and more and more. And a lot of the ones that are probably about that big have been pollinated with these honeybees that we got. So um, I am so grateful. These guys are looking awesome. They are doing great. We still are behind. Um, I'd estimate we're probably about a month behind, but I know that that's common and that most places are about a month behind. Um, we had a very, very cold spring and then we had a drought. So that is going to delay stuff a lot. So um, we're just hoping for the best, hoping that we have a late frost because that is gonna be our make or break this year. Um, if we have an early frost, we will probably lose a whole bunch of almost ripe pumpkins. And I'm thinking of some ways that I can fix that in the future. Um, maybe finding, I really love how I have the vines, the long vines um, along the back, and then the bush out front. And so maybe um, most of the pumpkin varieties that I have next year will be 95 days or less. I'm not quite sure. It's something I'm thinking about and we'll see how it plays out this fall. Um, but they are now doing really good. They look beautiful, they look healthy, um, and they are producing like crazy. And that is all I can ask for at this point. So that is it for today's video. Thanks for tuning in guys, and we'll see you next time.